in something. Uh, so, but in any case, the transaction makes sense. And then it's going to go up top to then the accounts receivable. If I go to the AR and, and so it the other side would be in here. If I brought the date back and, and then that looks good. And then if I go into my customer balance detail report, we can see it going in and out to the receivable. That's the point of this added journal entry in my estimation. So you can see it going in and out of accounts receivable and not just cutting accounts receivable out entirely. So it's in the detail report. But if you go to the customer, uh, the, the, the customer, where's the balance detail? The customer center, where's the other report? The customer's receivable, customer prepayment report. Now you see the detail here, the start, and it's decreasing by those two, leaving in here. If I go to my customer balance detail, we see no, the customer center. So now we can see this one. And again, it gets quite convoluted with all these journal entries because you're going to get two journal entries every time an invoice happens. Let's do one more just to fin just to round it out to what we did in the last problem. Sales order. One more time. I didn't hear no bell. I only stop doing stuff when I hear a bell because that means food is happening usually. We're going to create an invoice, create an invoice for selected items, and then we'll uncheck those one more month. And then <clears throat> this, I think I'm on, uh, what, what were we on? What month were we on? Does anybody know? Uh, October. October invoice uh, 10127. And so this is going to do the same thing. Let's run the journal entry over here. Do it fast because people are getting bored. Invoice month three. I don't know why we even have to do this one. After what you need to do another one, we have to make it match. We have to make it match what we did in the other problem. So I'll just copy these down. And so this is going to be the AR same journal entry. Boom, 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 boom. Same thing. And then accounts receivable is going to go up on the A to the R. The income, double clicking on it, it's going to go up. And then the sales tax, it's going to go up. And then we've got this stuff is in the AR. We're going to take it out of the AR. So now it went in and out of the AR so we can see it in the subledger. And then the unearned revenue is going down. Boom. So I think that's right. I think we did that right. Let's see. That's what should happen over here. So it should increase the accounts receivable by 3771 because it's an invoice. Other side should go to the income and then we should have sales tax payable 271. But it shouldn't have gone to AR. It should have gone to decrease the liability. So it's going to make another journal entry, taking it out of the liability account and netting it out against the AR. But give us a weird date. Let's oh before I forget, let's apply the credit out this way. Uh, the changes to this transaction. So I'll, I'm going to save the changes there. I can apply it out that way. So there it is. And there's no way I can change the date to stop with this weird thing. Do that with the journal entry. I don't see how to do it. And then, yeah, it won't let me do that. Muy interessante. Okay, let's go ahead and save it and close it and check it out if we if we could. Go into the balance sheet one more time. We're going to say that the A to the R has the 3771 again. The other side going to the P, the L, the income statement for October. There's the 35 there. Then back to the balance sheet, back to the basics and the balance sheet. We're going down to the sales tax payable, sales tax payable right there. Double clicking on it. It's been impacted and then we know there's a decrease to the liability account, the liability account, unearned revenue down to the 75. Is that what I have here? 75.42. It is indeed 
what I have. But they, they did the crazy date thing because it's doing the journal entries as of that date. There's the journal entry. It's also taking it in and out of the clearing account. And the other side would go to the AR on the balance sheet, which we won't check out because, again, it's going to be hidden in the prior uh, year. And then the sub ledger for my customer balance detail, we can see it going in and out with the journal entry and then the invoices. Again, the journal entry is having the date uh, issue, which I think should be tied to the invoice date, as far as I can tell. And then, but we at least see the detail conceptually that looks good from that standpoint. Open prepayments, we can see the activity here and the detail in here, which looks good, although the journal entry is not exactly specific. And again, the dates are kind of an issue, but we're working in the future. So that is what it is. Customer center over here looks, everything looks pretty clear for all the stuff that makes, that we're concentrating in on from a bookkeeping standpoint, except that we have all these other journal entries that are going to, going to cloud things up in here. So that's kind of annoying, but from a bookkeeping standpoint, we would be saying, I'm not going to, I'm just going to ignore the journal entries because that's just the weird bookkeeping stuff or weird QuickBook stuff. And I'm just going to focus on this and, and that stuff is following as it should, right? So if I compare this process to this process with the negative AR looks very similar in the forms that we're actually dealing with. Although the negative AR doesn't have all those journal entries, doesn't have two sub ledgers. When you're looking at the balance sheet for the sub ledgers, doesn't have a clearing account, doesn't have this extra journal entry in and of itself right here. And it doesn't have the added clearing account that QuickBooks is putting in to do that. And it doesn't, and it doesn't show those transactions down here, which all add some room for problems to happen. So again, it works pretty good. There's no way to eliminate all those added little intricacies uh, so that, that I can see. So that's, those are the, some of the pros and cons. And remember, if I go back to uh, the, the, the chart of the accounts, lists chart of the accounts, it's going in and out of this account, which you can only see if it was in, uh, include active sales. So it made it inactive, QuickBooks did, so that you don't see the detail of it going uh, in and out of here, but, but, there, but there it is. And so it put them all in as of 1215 because that's what QuickBooks is seeing as the current date. So those are kind of the pros and cons on if we're looking at it from the uh, subscription model side of things. So we've kind of went over it in terms of a deposit type of format, pros and cons between the two methods and with the subscription.